for a bank to her about uh, basically how to get the optics for the next generation, and we also talk what we have achieved in fact for the for the current generation, and uh, how we we'll try basically to improve. So I start relatively simple. In fact, uh, if you want to to have a mirror or so an optics, it has in fact uh, three ingredients, which is a substrate. So that typically is a material that gives the shape, the mass. Then you have a, a second step, which is a polishing. So at that time, you have a polished substrate. So typically, if it's in glass, it still reflects only 4%. And if you want to make it a mirror, you need to have a coating. So that the coating will allow you, in fact, uh, to have a very high reflectivity or anti-reflections. And so you need really these uh, three ingredients to have the mirrors. And if you want to improve, I would say, your mirrors, you have also to improve the three ingredients separately so they don't have the same, uh, cause the same constraint. And I was wondering, I would say, if I have to do the a perfect mirror, at least for me, so basically the three ingredients will have to be perfect. So what do we call uh, perfect? So for the substrate, we don't want to be limited by the dimension, so I want to be as big as I want. No optical loss, so it means no absorption, no diffusion. No mechanical loss, so it means uh, no thermal noise. It should be heavy, as you know, to counterbalance radiation pressure noise. Easy to polish, easy to coat. Means the list could be quite long, or it could be high thermal conductivity, for example. So that's why we will hope. For the polishing, it should be able to be polished, of course, with a perfect curvature. So it means you want to have uh, no defect on the surface. Also, the high spatial frequency uh, defect that we call a roughness or point defect should be totally absent. So it's really a perfect surface. You also, what is important, sometimes you may want arbitrary shapes. So we used to have a cylinder or square mirrors, but you want to be able to create some flat to attach your ear. So you may have a, something not only a simple shape and of course some other things. And the last step, so for the coating, of course, if you have a big substrate, you also want to be a big coating. The coating should not limit your, your aperture. And one more time, no optical loss, so it means no scattering, no absorption, no mechanical loss. Also, what is important and which is not so easy is that if you have done a perfect polishing, at the end, if you add your several microns of layer of the coating, you want to maintain the polishing quality and not degrade. So not change the curvature, not add some uh, special frequency on the surface. And the last point, which is also important, you want that for a reasonable price. In any case, it will be always too expensive. And also a quick delivery. When we say quick delivery, it's the order of the years. But you don't want, to, for example, a large bulk of diamonds that will take ages to grow and you will have some problem to polish. So I will talk mainly, yes, about large mirrors, but I will not mention uh, the problem of cutting thermal noise because it has a, it's a wall, uh, you say, it has some uh, dedicated talks about it, so some uh, after me, some more uh, this afternoon. So that's why I will just uh, mainly uh, limit myself in size, optical properties, but if you want to hear about thermal noise, yes, you will have to be... Uh, a little bit patient, but it will come. So now I will pass through the ingredients uh, one by one. So the substrate choice. So we start with a few silica. That's really, uh, this material is really a gift. And that's why it was used for uh, room temperature first and second generation. So I don't like go, I don't go have them. And it's really a, a justified choice. So we, we know why we use it. First, it has extremely good optical properties. So you can see very low absorption, very refringent, high homogeneity. It could be a 3D materials. It's available easily in large size, and the polishing and coating is well mastered because it has been used uh, for years. So here's that's an example of uh, taken in the clean room of LMA. So that's the few silica plate used as a beam splitter for advanced Viago, and as you can see, the size, maybe a little bit, you can see the mount behind, the metallic mount, but here it's uh, 550 millimeters uh, in diameter, 65 millimeters thick. It's roughly 40 kilos, so it means it's really available uh, in large dimension. And also, it has some uh, interesting particularity for gravitational detectors. Is that it has very low bulk thermal noise. We'll a little bit come back. And also, we can do a monoidic suspension. So you could have also attached your here, also made in fused silica. You should have some glass fiber, also made in fused silica. And all of that, you could have a full, uh, at its last stage, in fused silica. And of course, it's to reduce the, the displacement of surface mirror due to thermal noise. So that's really, uh, definitely a, a selling point. And uh, two days ago, in fact, we visited the factory of Ferraris, which is in the suburb of Frankfurt, and uh, to ask, uh, okay, what we want next is usually we go to have bigger mirrors. And if they, it could be available, so yes, at least for uh, 1D, what they call 1D functional material. So it means all the mirrors where you have a, 
the laser beam at normal incidence to the surface, so typically most of the optics like input mirror and mirror porocycling CP, except the beam splitter. In fact, there is no problem to have a heavier mass or larger diameters. It's really the problem, it's about uh, creating the proper handling tools. And also, we have, when we have to put few CK in the furnace, you could be limited by the roof of the factory, but there is no, no issue to have uh, this kind of materials. The problem is about uh, what they call 3D materials. So that's the beam splitter, because the beam splitter, we have uh, part of the beam we arrive with an angel in it. And we still have the limitation of 40 kilograms due to what they call the homogenization process. We told them that it could be a limit for us, and they will investigate, but of course they do no promise. So that's, uh, for 1D it's okay, and for 3D, we can see we have uh, some limitation inside. It's not necessary, uh, I would say, a showstopper. Oops. Do, do, do. Simply because uh, we may not necessarily uh, need to have a large beam splitter if we manage to focus the beam before the beam splitter to reduce the size of the beam. So it's difficult to be done in a current infrastructure because it was not designed for that. But when we have new infrastructure, such as an chance telescope or a Voyager in, in further third generation, it's possible, in fact, to reduce the size of the beam at the beam splitter level. And so in that case, the beam splitter, as such we have it now, could be enough. The problem is that fused silica is not suitable for, uh, for low temperature. So here you have a, a graph with the horizontal axis, the temperature, and the substrate mechanical loss, so Brownian noise, Brownian uh, can inversely proportional to the Brownian noise. So as you can see, as you load on the temperature, in fact, uh, fused silica uh, is losses increase, where some uh, two crystalline materials, sapphire and silicon, the losses uh, can of decrease. So that means fused silica is not suitable for, for low temperature. So we have to find other materials, so as you heard from uh, Michele Tolk, uh, Japanese colleagues are using uh, sapphire. For very high purity, the problem of sapphire is not available in large size. You could have larger size than uh, 200 millimeters, but the problem is the uh, optical property is really bad, and it's for some other applications. So here, the 220 is really the maximum uh, they managed to get. They have relatively high absorption still, knowing that it's not, uh, the problem is not about thermal lensing as such because at low temperature it has very high thermal conductivity. So the gradient of temperature is flat, but it's at low temperature you have to extract the heat from the test mass. So you have to dimension your fiber accordingly, your suspension fiber, and so you hope to have always thinner fiber and so maybe have less heat to extract. So the absorption is really uh, critical. And uh, it has been so already implemented in Chagra with monopity suspension and you could have told this afternoon uh, about it. Then for third generation, we will have a longer arm. So we heard about uh, 10, ki 10 kilometers or larger. So it means larger beam size on your mirror. So it means you are looking for larger substrate. So for room temperature, there is no doubt that fused silica will still, uh, still do the job. For room temperature, we like the size and optical property of fused silica. And uh, that's the, the wish and the material for uh, silicon. So let's see, Michele uh, mentioned it. Here's that the transmission, in fact, uh, optical transmission of the silicon have the function of the wavelength. So currently means for second generation room temperature, we are, as you know, at 164 nanometers. And at this, with this wavelength, this, uh, silicon is not transparent. So in fact, you have to go to higher wavelengths, and uh, one of the choices is uh, 1,550 nanometers, where we have also all the industry of telecoms, which can provide uh, some... Uh, lasers, photodiode. So we have to change the wavelengths of the lasers. And uh, also, you should keep that it has a high refractive index compared to 1.5 roughly for a few silica. Here is a 3.45. So that means that when it's uncoated, the reflectivity is already a 30% by, uh, by side. So that's why, in fact, here is not, if you don't transmit 100%, it's not because due to the absorption, but simply because you have some uh, Fresnel reflection on, on both sides. And we know that uh, one critical point is the absorption. And the absorption is, in fact, proportional of the impurity or the dopant in silicon. So for the semiconductor industry, of course, that's some, uh, some dopant. And uh, what, uh, what we need to have, in fact, is a very pure, uh, very pure silicon, in fact, to, have, uh, to guarantee a very low absorption. So here is two plots for two different kinds of silicon, whereas you reduce, in fact, the, what we call the free carrier, which is proportional to the impurity concentration at room temperature. In fact, you can see that uh, the absorption decreases, and we could find uh, some absorption, in fact, uh, as low as 5 ppm per centimeter, which has been measured on, uh, on small sample. 
And uh, the size absorption, in fact, are linked due to the fabrication process. So different process, in fact, will achieve different purity of, uh, of silicones. So using what we call a float zone compared to Schroeschlacht T, in fact, uh, we can achieve uh, the 5 ppm that I mentioned in the, in the previous slide. And like also Michele mentioned, maybe the, the way to have large dimension means maybe is to use magnetic, uh, in fact, magnetic in one sense, purification. And the, the target is to have 450 mm. 450 millimeters, 450 millimeters diameter substrate with an absorption as low as 5 ppm. So we'll see if it's possible, but that's, uh, that's the target. And uh, so the research is going to work that uh, in our field. Something, uh, with, something which was interesting, in fact, is the absorption is dependent on the temperature. So we, in the previous plot, it was measured uh, at the room temperature. And some measurement was done, in fact, some years ago to measure the absorption as a function of temperature. So here is normalized absorption where we're, we are at one at low temperature. And you can see that, in fact, at room temperature and very low temperature, such as 20 Kelvin, you don't have a lot of improvement. But you have a, a gap in between when it's lower, as in fact you have a, the free carrier is frozen. Basically, the impurity is no more ionized. And after, you have a kind of photoionization. So you have a two different process where acting has different temperature. But Basically, you don't decrease much if you go from a room temperature to, to very low temperature. But you still have a kind of maybe an optimal. So that was done, in fact, on uh, dope material with different uh, dopants. So they, they don't have the same uh, energy. So that's why it's not the same. Uh, it happened at the same temperature, the minima. So it's just something, uh, basically, to keep in mind. So now the, the second step is the polishing. So it has less, less to be said. So first, uh, for second generation, it was really outstanding, means the polishing was, uh, was just amazing after uh, when we received the substrate before coating. When we put them in the simulation, it almost looked like uh, perfect. So here, for example, you have uh, on, the, on the left one, it's uh, over a diameter of 150 millimeters, so the central part of the mirrors. And you can see typically the, the vertical scale is between minus one and plus one nanometers. So the peak to valley is two nanometers, so that's... Uh, it's extremely good. The RMS is below 0.2 nanometers. So, like I said, for simulation, this kind of surface could be considered as uh, perfect. So, then the high spatial frequency range, which is used, which is uh, linked directly to the optical scattering, so optical loss, has been also been uh, constantly uh, extremely good. So, and the order of the Armstrong uh, RMS, so it's uh, really excellent. So that was for few silica. For sapphire, it used to be difficult because it's a very hard material, so people cannot reach the same properties. But thanks to, in fact, uh, Chag thanks to Chagra, they really opened the way. And in fact, it has been shown that the polishing could be, uh, could, that could be achieved almost the same performance as few silica. However, it takes longer time, in fact, and they still have some trouble for the, for the Chagra mirror. And it's also more expensive. But if you have time and money, that you could achieve almost the same as a few silica. For silicone, when we talk to the polishers, they say there is no major issue. Means it's a material they regularly also use uh, thanks to the semiconductor industry. Micro roughness may be slightly higher, but maybe because they are not focusing on it. Whether it's more brittle, easier to damage during the cleaning and handling, but that's something we can also, I would say, uh, kind of manage with, uh, with precaution. So just some words, uh, at least from me. Means what I found is that it's currently outstanding. You know, it's really uh, amazing. I would not expect much. Uh, much better performance for third generation because it's already amazingly good. Means we are really uh, almost removing atoms by atoms if you, if you look at the, at the surface map. Metrology is also critical at this level, and that may be also one of the limiting points that if you want to polish correctly, you have to be able to measure it and see. So, uh, and see uh, where you have to remove more matter. So, the metrology needs to follow, and it's maybe one of the, of the limiting points that we have always a little bit of noise when we measure, for example, the mirror surface, and that's something to, to keep in mind. And of course, the larger the mirror, the larger the cut of uh, polishing. The last step, the coating, that's maybe, uh, I would say, the, not a worrying part, but uh, at least where it has uh, really some intense effort. So just for the second generation, in fact, all the test mass has been uh, coated using uh, ion beam sputtering, so IBS, and done in the big coating machine at uh, LMA, so that's behind this, uh, this huge door. And uh, what was interesting is that because the mirror was, in fact, uh, smaller, we coated two by two. But we can coat just one mirror, one by one, up to a large diameter, 600 or 700 millimeters. 
They have uh, the mirror has been achieved low mechanical loss, so I think we'll come back in some of the presentation where we try to reduce still the, the coating mechanical loss to lower the absorption limit. It has been very low absorption, so typically less than 0 0.3 ppm at uh, 164. Low scattering also, and it has been really constant uh, from uh, batch to batch of the mirrors. And the good thing is that the, the coating has not degraded uh, the polishing in the central part. After it, it has added, I would say, some structure at, uh, on larger, uh, I would say, uh, scale. But uh, even if we had uh, six microns of uh, typically uh, at share uh, ETM coating, in fact, the RMS is still 0 0.5 nanometers. So we have cheap the, the good quality of the, of the polishing. But we have uh, some challenges because especially there is a huge uh, worldwide effort means both sides of the Atlantic, in fact, to reduce the coating thermal noise. And for that, we have uh, a lot of parameters, in fact, we can, uh, we can try. It could be different coating technology, means not necessarily uh, IBS, but maybe uh, try evaporation. Or there is, uh, some, some other parameters, even in the, coating, uh, in the coating machine, means you have a lot of buttons you can turn about your sources. New materials, Niobia, silicon nitrite, amorphous silicon. New coating design, maybe not just use a two stack, mid stack of two materials, one after the other, but maybe mix with a third materials. Crystalline coatings are also dopant, means it's, uh, it's really not an exhaustive list. list. But what is important is that all these tests that uh, I mentioned when they try it have been done typically on small scale, so one, pu uh, one inch, two inch, three inch substrate wafers. And you should really keep an eye uh, on first the optical performances because we can find uh, some material with very low, uh, very low thermal noise. But what about the absorption, scattering, and also second step, which is as important, the technology scaling for large mirrors because doing a sample one inch or three inch is not the same as doing uh, for 400, 500, 600 millimeters diameters. And if you cannot extrapolate, it means maybe it's not the, the right strategy uh, you are doing. So. I will not mention, like I said, all the research, but I could say what is happening now in LMA, since if I, I know. So first is the research on uh, increase the, the coating size so for, for the test mass. So at that time, we will coat uh, one piece at a time. So it means we, because the coating machine is not, means it's not large enough to put two large mirrors. So it will be in single rotation. And the goal, it will be to have a, a coating uniformity of 0.1% up to the extremely large diameter, so 550 millimeters. Also, we will uh, test if we can do some corrective coating, so that's post deposition corrective coating. So you will add some fused silica, basically, if you have to change uh, a little bit the coating shape at a uh, large uh, spatial dimension. Then also something very important for gravitational wave detector is because we have two arm cavities, the two uh, optical performance of the two cavities, in fact, should be identical. So you should have a transmission matching, what we call of the two, for example, two input mirrors. So you have it guaranteed if you code them both at the same time, but if you code them one after the other, you have always some drift in the coating machine. So you should be able, in fact, to monitor in situ the coating and to know where to stop. And also, we can also do, uh, in that case, in kind of uniform corrective coating to change slightly, for example, the transmission of the, of the performance uh, of the mirrors. Then uh, one of the challenges, not the... HR coating, basically, if you want very low transmission, is relatively easy. We just have, in fact, to add more and more layers. But the problem is, uh, the, really, the challenge is ultra low anti reflection coating. And it's also the, there's also a lot of application for the coating because if your higher coating is not good, basically, you are losing some light. And at the end of uh, 10 lengths, basically, you, you are losing something quite consequent. So right now, is roughly, uh, we can manage repeatedly, uh, typically, uh, air coating reflection less than 100 ppm at 164 and uh, angel of incident zero degree. And the goal is to be uh, to decrease by a factor of two that. And also what is important, we have some also some demand for other wavelengths and other angel of incidence. So, and that's really a challenge. And one more time, that could be uh, in situ optical monitoring. That could be, uh, yes, the, the, the way to proceed. We have also, we have started some work to reduce the optical scattering. So if you look, uh, for example, at your uh, mirror, uh, your arm cavity mirror, when you shine a very intense beam, like you have in the arm cavity, you see plenty of little points. We diffuse some light. So of course, one more time, that optical loss. And it's not sure, basically, where it's come from, if it's due to defect will grow uh, from the polishing, or it's depending on, the, on your layers. So we want to investigate the, the nature and origin of the defect, or they grow. Is it related to the total thickness, or the, the number of interface that you could have in your in your coating. 
and that we have started a kind of internship. So that's uh, that was some, uh, what did you say? Some idea basically to improve and to to be able, in fact, to provide the mirror for uh, sub generation the continue. So I come to the conclusion. So it's for sub generation it was uh, really the coating was extremely satisfying. I mean, from the substrate, the polishing, uh, and the coating. For the generation, at least, I think the substrate, at least for room temperature polishing, will definitely will be sit suitable. So we have the technological capability. And really, everyone is looking at the progress on the coating <coughs> front. Because if we don't lower, for example, the, the thermal noise, means you cannot use the full uh, reach, for example, of the squeezing, because you will not be uh, limited uh, fully quantum noise over your, all your frequency band. And like I say, if you are constrained on the, on the, on the metrology, it would also be important because we are at the limit in a lot of things to measure, for example, uh, diffusion or optical absorption. So we'll have uh, to think about uh, upgrade if we improve uh, again on that front. And at the end, you just hold the, where I take all the data if you are interested. Uh, okay. <laughs>